Okay, yes, my last two videos were about romance, and yes, this video was also about romance. Listen, I'm in a mood, okay? You have to deal with it. So last year in July, I did a reading vlog where I read three contemporary YA romances all in one weekend, trying to get myself to like the romance genre because typically I don't tend to like books that are romance-focused. Do I love me a good romance? Absolutely. Again, my last two videos were all about that. I typically don't like books that are entirely based on romance. I tend more to like a fantasy or an action adventure with romance romance included. When romance is the forefront, for whatever reason, I just tend to not be into it. But then I thought about it, and I realized that the romances I've been reading are a little, um, how do I put this plainly? Uh, straight and white. No offense. So I purposely sought out three new romances so I could try this challenge all over again, but this time I wanted to diversify my romantic horizons a little bit. So I found three books that are all YA romances, but with one thing in common. They all feature trans characters of color. So this weekend, I'll be challenging myself to once again read three romance books to see how I feel about this genre as a whole. And hopefully now with some more diversity added into the mix there, my opinions on romance might change more toward the positive. So without further ado, let me introduce to you the three books that I will be devouring over this Saturday and Sunday. The first book that I'm going to read is The Passing Playbook by Isaac Fitzsimmons. I want to give a big thank you and shout out to Penguin Teen for sending me an arc of this book. It comes out on June 1st. It is about a black transgender boy named Spencer who joins his school's soccer team but because of the discriminatory laws in his state he's benched and not able to play and so he along with his teammate who he develops the feelings for and the other students at his school and his parents and family they all work together to try to overcome the transphobia and the discriminatory laws and hopefully let Spencer play his favorite sport and also fall in love along the way. This sounds super duper adorable. I'm not a big sports person so I hope I don't get too confused with the soccer lingo. The second book that I'm going to read is May the Best Man Win by Z.R. Eller. This book is about a transgender boy named Jeremy who, after coming out as trans, decides to run against his ex-boyfriend for the title of Homecoming King. And again, sports. Why do I keep doing this to myself? I don't know a thing about football, but there are going to be some hilarious shenanigans in here and I for one cannot wait to get into it. And then lastly I will be reading Meet Cute Diary by Emery Lee. This is about a trans boy named Noah Ramirez who has a blog where he writes about all of these various meet cute situations that everyone thinks is real until one day it gets revealed that they're not and Noah decides to go the obvious route of fake dating one of his friends and pretending that all the diary entries are real all along. Gee I wonder how this one's gonna turn out. I've been looking forward to this for so so long especially after following Emery Lee on Twitter for quite some time and just seeing the process of this book come to life and it seems absolutely adorable. I am all for the fake dating trope. I am all for the meet cutes. I am so ready for this. So I'm gonna take you guys along with me reading vlog style and get started on these books. It is a beautiful weekend so come along with me and let's get reading. And now I've immediately converted back to comfy mode because contacts hurt my eyes. Anyway, so the fun thing about getting ARCs is sometimes I get a digital copy and a physical copy. So I've actually started reading the passing playbook already. And so far, I love that Spencer and Justice don't have a meet cute. They have a sorry my mom accidentally almost just ran you over meeting. And then it's just like all downhill from there until they start to communicate, which I just love. It's like, why does this guy hate me? I don't know. But then Justice is thinking the same thing. Like, why does this new kid hate me so much? It's like, aw. You two are gonna fall in love. It's gonna be cute. Spencer has also made like three Marvel references by now, including saying that his school was more like the charter school that Miles Morales attended than the Xavier Institute. And I just, I'm in love with this kid. He's so dorky and also plays sports. Get you a man who can do both. You know, one thing I love about this book so far is that it's not a coming out story because at the current point where the story starts Spencer has already been out to his parents for a few years he's been on hormone blockers and like obviously the title the passing playbook which it took me far too long to realize that like passing as in like in soccer but also passing as cisgender I don't claim to be intelligent okay uh, <laughs> but Spencer's whole issue in the story is that he was bullied to the point that someone had threatened violence against him at his old school and so now when he transfers to his new school he is trying his best to be like stealth about being trans and just to pass as a cisgender boy. Any coming out that's gonna come from him is just him telling 
future classmates or people who don't already know him, but his family knows him and his family accepts him so much. And it's not an issue of, oh, no one understands me. It's an issue of lots of people I love understand me, but they still don't get it entirely. Like Spencer's parents don't want him to join the boys team because they still think that he's not physically capable as the other boys. They think he should like join a co-ed team first. And it's like, it's interesting to see a story with a trans character where it's not that they're entirely closeted still but it's also not that they're at a point where everyone in their life just understands they're still at that midpoint where yes my parents are supportive yes they understand what I'm going through and they support my transition but at the same time they still treat me like the kid that they used to think I was rather than who I am now. I also really love the contrast because Spencer's little brother Theo in the story is autistic and hyper fixates on animals specifically like watching Animal Planet and just randomly spouts out animal facts and so not only is that like adorable and I love it it also creates a contrast of how Spencer's parents handle having both a kid who isn't cisgender and a kid who is not neurotypical and how they have to obviously make special accommodations for both of their kids in order to give them a happy healthy successful life but just the sheer amount of love that Spencer's parents have for both of their kids is just astounding and I love it and again like seeing a happy loving supportive black family a plus. Good job. Good job, Isaac Fitzsimmons. Thank you. But also, like, Spencer's soccer coach, like, Will Schuster's him into joining the soccer team. He's like, oh, you kicked a kid in the head with that soccer ball. It'd be a shame if the school were to find out about you injuring a kid. But if you join a soccer team, then we can just forget about all that. Like, <laughs> it's not as bad as what Will Schuster did, but... And then you immediately contrast all of that to Justice's family. So Justice is Spencer's soccer teammate who they had the like awkward meeting and then Spencer was like oh this guy's cute I might have a crush on him and then it's like just getting this guy's a jerk actually no maybe he's just repressing his feelings because of some deep dark secret and the deep dark secret is that his family's super religious and conservative this is gonna hurt isn't it like not only is that a realistic struggle in a small midwestern town but it's also just such a sad reality for so many young queer kids oh this is gonna hurt my feelings isn't it Aww. and then aside from all of that spencer is also a member of the queer straight alliance at his school and he's advocating for trans rights while not being out as trans himself but there is one other trans member of the qsa that he keeps speaking up for and it's just Oh man, watching him navigate all of these difficulties while not being out to anyone is just... <laughs> He's 15. He's going through so much. I just want to be like, you're doing a good job, buddy. But also he and Justice had this like weird flirtatious thing going on. And the entire time Spencer's in his head like, I don't even know if Justice is gay. What if he doesn't like me? What if he's super conservative and religious like his family? And it's like, <laughs> I'm sorry, do you see the way you two are interacting? Do you not understand? <laughs> I love that dynamic where two characters are very obviously flirting with each other and yet the one is so insecure that they're like I don't even know if this person likes me and then everyone around them is like are you joking? Are, are you serious? God I love it. I love this book so far. This is great. <laughs> but at the same time, like I said, I'm not a sports person and there is a lot of soccer happening. I'm trying to understand and I just don't. So I'm just kind of skimming all of the uh, sport games happening. Otherwise, this novel is not only full of gender identity, racial identity, sexuality, people coming to terms with their family, their peers, every kind of obstacle that can come with being a queer kid in high school, being a queer kid of color, not being out. It's just navigating all of these things wonderfully. And I love it so much. This book is great. <laughs> I'm just about to finish up, but one last comment on Spencer's just A plus iconic snarky commentary. He's not like super sarcastic, but every once in a while he gets in a good one liner that I just want to... <sighs> Yes, so here he's talking to a sportsman person and the sportsman person says, Did you know that we were the first desegregated league in the state? And then Spencer's internal monologue goes, he said, as if he deserved a medal for not being racist. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. And that is it. We are done with book number one, which is funny because it's sitting right next to me in physical form, but I read the ebook, so I get to close it twice. There we go. Honestly, overall thoughts, this was adorable. There were a few places where the pacing was iffy. It kind of just skips over periods of time. And I feel a lot of contemporary novels do that. They don't break it down by like each 
moment. Obviously, like, days get skipped or we're not gonna chronicle, like, every single class of the day or things like that, but sometimes it was just jarring to hop from moment to moment, but I think that's just a contemporary thing rather than a romance genre thing, but this was really, really cute. Honestly, a lot of very, very important messages, obviously. Um, the romance was adorable, 100% adorable. This book is uh, mildly heartbreaking, so just a fair warning for that. I mean, the way I talked about one of the characters in the relationship having a very religious, conservative, homophobic, transphobic family, obviously, you're gonna be expecting some hard conversations, some hard moments in this book, and nothing ever gets violent or threatening towards the main characters on page, so that is good. In general, this was just a really quick, really adorable read, and I loved it, so I gave it four stars, and I will absolutely be revisiting it in the future because it was absolutely precious and also like made me want to watch a soccer game which is weird but yeah on the back here it says heartfelt and humorous the passing playbook is a feel-good romance and i 100 percent agree with that statement it is heartfelt humorous feel good heartbreaking at the same time you will laugh you might cry i almost did at one point spencer and justice are adorable there's spencer there's justice there they are with their passing playbook again it took me way too long to realize like passing as i'm like a soccer ball but also passing is so anyway and now on to the next one so once again sports are involved i know slightly more about football and cheerleading than i do about soccer because that was my life for a minute it starts at homecoming kickoff which the passing playbook also started at the beginning of a school year so i think all of these books are going to have that in common maybe i'm not sure what the timeline is in Meet Cute Diary, but we're gonna be doing some comparing and contrasting, seeing how this goes. I have a good feeling that I'm going to enjoy this because um, Becky Albertalli loved it and I trust her. <laughs> so let's get into this. We'll see how late I end up staying up reading this, so. And as you can see, I've also now officially made the conversion from comfy mode to ultra comfy mode. We are in full PJs and we're gonna start this baby and get as far as we can before I fall asleep tonight. Guess who read a whopping three pages last night and then fell asleep? Me. I did. It's morning. <laughs> Let's try this again. Okay, so so far this book has a very interesting pacing to its setup. Like the very first two chapters were essentially just backstory and info dump in a way that we needed to know what our two main characters, this here is Lucas and my pinky is pointing towards Jeremy. So as of three chapters in, we have just learned that Jeremy has recently transitioned. He's only been on testosterone for about three weeks. Um, we find out that he and Lucas broke up prior to the events of the book, uh, just a couple months before, I believe. We also learn that Lucas is autistic and has an older brother who recently passed away, and he feels like his older brother was always the achiever, the smart one, the independent one, and so Lucas has a lot riding on him for running for Homecoming King because he wants to get a college scholarship and wants to prove to his family and his peers that he is just as good as his brother has just as much worth whereas Jeremy wants to run for homecoming king because so far people in his life his peers his family his mother essentially really aren't taking his transition seriously and he's been cheer captain and president of student government and so so basically his entire school career has led to him being on homecoming court but now his transition and him coming out as trans has kind of put that idea to a halt because now he's afraid that people aren't going to take him seriously as a prom king contender a very interesting setup we've got going on here also a Apologies for my raspy voice. It is seven in the morning. And another thing that I love about Jeremy's character so far is that he very much wants people to take his transition seriously, obviously use the correct pronouns for him, use his correct name, but at the same time he doesn't want to give up the traditionally feminine things that he's always loved in his life, like obviously cheerleading. At some point he says that he misses wearing a full face of makeup, things like that. And it's so important to touch on the pressure of traditional gender roles when it comes to people who aren't cisgender because in Jeremy's case especially he's trying as hard as just to get people to take him seriously to use his correct pronouns and use his right name and to look at him and see a boy but he's at the same time still wants to enjoy the things that he enjoys because he used to be in pageants and used to wear like big frilly ball gowns and beautiful makeup and and that adds a different layer to his character because he still wants to like the things he likes and do the things he loves but he also feels the pressure from people around him to look and present a certain way so that they'll take him seriously which is just 
you know, awful. It sucks. <laughs> so I'm really interested to see how this is all gonna play out. I mean, I'm sure I know how it's gonna play out. It's a romance novel, but like, I really like this paragraph here. I won't turn into anyone else's stereotype of what a man should be. I'm not that trans guy who knew from age two his lifelong dream was playing pro baseball or growing a lumberjack beard. I let myself cheer since already a few boys in the team and I give up things like skinny jeans, but I need to be careful. I need to signal to Cresswell High that I'm man enough so people remember my pronouns and don't hesitate when they see my name on the king's balance or the queen's. So I'm about a hundred pages in and I have some concerns. <clears throat> Hello voice, what are you doing? I didn't read any content warnings for this book before I started and so far I am just being bombarded with transphobia. Um, Jeremy gets misgendered very very often especially by this one character philip who is a very second amendment proud conservative type character whose entire purpose is just to be a terrible person i guess there should also be content warnings for just violence in general um one of our characters has self-harm tendencies and jeremy is basically constantly misgendered by everyone which could be hard to read so so i would just want anyone who would decide to read this in the future to just be aware of that also just in general these characters characters aren't very likable. There's this entire web of friendship where like Lucas and Jeremy used to date but now they're exes but they all have like the same mutual friends and like their friends are all bad people and Lucas and Jeremy aren't exactly the nicest people and I'm having a hard time really connecting with any of them because they all seem kind of selfish and ignorant. Just I don't know I'm not quite enjoying this one as much as I liked the passing playbook but I'm gonna give it a few more pages and see what's going on. I try my best not to DNF books, but I'm not really liking this and I can't really see it going in any kind of way that I would like. In general, the whole vibe is really, really negative and I'm here for happy, positive things. So I guess we'll see how this goes. Like, yes, the whole point of the book is that they're rivals for Homecoming Court and that they're exes and they very much do not like each other, but it's already spiraled into like downright bullying on both of their ends and they're just not communicating at all and it's just so, so frustrating because they're being like terribly mean. It's not even petty stuff, they are straight up bullying each other and I'm just not the kind of person who can do it with this kind of plot. I mean, I knew that that's what it would be when it's like, oh, when the boys take their rivalry too far, they jeopardize the entire dance. Like, yeah, but I thought it would be like silly things, not them essentially hazing each other for fun. Okay, update 50 pages later, it's gone from petty bullying to straight up like toxic abuse between the two of them. They're just like lying to each other and going behind each other's backs and like saying one thing and meaning another and just, this is not fun. This is not cute and wholesome. No criticism to the author. I actually really do like the writing style. It's just the plot that's making me upset. This book does switch POVs. It goes back and forth between Jeremy and Lucas's point of views and they're both first person so you're getting all of the mean terrible toxicity from like a first person perspective. I will try and finish this but it's um, it's just, everyone's so mean. I don't, I'm not here for the meanness. I'm here for romance and cutesiness. I, let's see how this goes. I'm 220 pages in, which is just about two thirds, and I think I'm gonna have to give up on this one. It's just the relationship between Lucas and Jeremy isn't just like petty ex rivalry. It's downright toxic. They are using, they're using each other's deepest insecurities against each other in just the most terribly blatantly like abusive way and I don't think I'm ever gonna be able to forgive either of these characters. They're both just kind of terrible people. I'm gonna give a little bit of a mild spoiler for now. Like I said, I'm on chapter 16 and at this point, Lucas has used old pictures of Jeremy from before he started his medical transition. like as blackmail fodder and now Jeremy is threatening to tell the entire school that Lucas is autistic. That's just, both of those things are just unforgivable behavior. And I just, I don't know if it's worth it to try and see either of these people be redeemed or end up back together or whatever's gonna happen between them. Cause it just is pretty darn gross and I can't really tolerate it. So I'm gonna skim the rest of this book. I'm gonna see how it ends and decide whether or not it's worth it to go back and read the details later. Okay, so final thoughts on this. I ended up skimming the last hundred pages or so and had the gist of what happened. Overall, I respect what this book did. It basically takes all of the like unhealthy, toxic, just manipulative tropes that straight couples typically get to have in complicated, messy romances and then added in all the possible queerness you could love. And I respect that because queer stories don't always have to be 
you like sunshine and rainbows and happiness. It's just that my personal tastes are of sunshine and rainbows and happiness. So regardless of what gender or what sexuality the main characters are in books, I prefer not to have stories packed with unhealthy relationships and like cheating and lying and manipulating and toxic behavior. So I respect this book. It was not for me. Hey, if you're the kind of person who likes like messy trashy romance, 100% go for this. But I am more of the cliche misunderstanding leads to a slow burn falling in love kind of thing. And this book was not really that. It was more um, misunderstanding leads to horrible manipulative behavior on both sides until they both realized they were wrong kind of thing. So, you know, to each their own, but this was not my favorite read. And so with that, I'm going to move on from May the Best Man Win and head into Meet Cute Diary, which absolutely seems way more up my alley. So like I said at the beginning of this video, this book is about a boy named Noah who runs a blog where he writes these fictional snippets of like meet cute situations and cute dating things. But when it gets outed that the blog actually isn't real, Noah decides, no, I'm going to make it real by fake dating my friend Drew and trying to make these scenarios actually happen so that people believe me and think it's credible. And of course, fake dating isn't gonna spiral into a real relationship. That never happens. <laughs> this synopsis definitely sounds like more of my thing like just the adorableness the sweet awkwardness the falling in love without meaning to kind of thing so I'm hoping that this one ends up being something that I really really enjoy because it seems like it will be so let's get into it but actually I have to work today so Ta-da! I will try to keep you all updated on this at my lunch break or just whenever things are slow and I can like write down my thoughts because I obviously can't vlog while I'm working. But yeah, I'm just gonna be reading at my desk for the most part. So here we go! Hi, hello there from Editing Deja. This is a segment I'd like to call Face Journeys in which I just react to my camera because I'm sitting at my desk at work and can't talk to the camera or else all the people I'm serving at work will think that I'm a crazy person. Anyway, I had the bright idea to start writing my thoughts on post-it notes, but I wouldn't forget what my facial reactions meant. Quick volume warning, I'm about to go on lunch break and scream at you. Okay. Ah! Oh my gosh. All right. <laughs> I'm on my lunch break so I can finally talk. Hello, this is my steering wheel. I'm in my car. It's very hot outside. This book is killing me! It's so adorable, but I'm so scared that something's gonna go terribly wrong because things are, like, happening too quickly. Like. We're in the first hundred pages, like the fake dating is established and things are going great and it's really cute, but I'm terrified that it's gonna end up going terribly wrong. Like, I just have this bad sense, but I, Noah's the cutest, most adorable, like, oh my God, he's precious. Like, he has a whole Tumblr blog where he just writes about fake romance and he's like so confident in his own looks. He's like, I'm adorable, I'm gorgeous, I'm hot. People should be in love with me. Why aren't they in love with me? And I love that. I love having a protagonist who's like confident in their looks. It's amazing. And it's just like all the adorableness happening and how Noah just really wants love and is like such a hopeless romantic. And is this what regular people feel like when they read romance? Have I just like been missing out on a niche that I needed to fall into? Oh my gosh, this is adorable. Like I, I legit had butterflies reading a scene earlier and I was like, is this what happens when normal people read romance? Like this is the cutest thing I have read like ever. And I'm so scared that it's gonna turn out terribly. <laughs> Anyway, um, I have 30 minutes, so I'm gonna try to eat lunch and then sit back at the counter and hope my managers don't yell at me for reading all day. But like, I work in a library, what else am I gonna do? Nothing. Anyway. Welcome back friends, here I am again on yet another face journey, and if you want to pause and see what I'm writing here, please feel free because I don't have enough time planned out in my uh, voiceover commentary to actually say out loud all the things I'm writing, but I'm talking a lot about how Emery Lee explores gender identity and how it's okay to switch pronouns or to not be sure because obviously these characters are teenagers and they don't know entirely who they are or what they want to be in life and I thought that was wonderful and amazing and great and in general I was really vibing and feeling myself here which you can see uh, the various positions I've been sitting at at my desk writing post-it notes and this was indeed across an entire eight hour shift so you can imagine the sanity behind my eyes leaving if you zoom in a little bit but uh yeah this is the adventure that i went on for the entire day please feel free to comment on whether or not you thought this was actually a good idea because in my head i was like yeah let's just write post-it notes and um this was the end result so <laughs> oh i love that facial expression that's great Anyway, um, you'll hear my voice again, not in voiceover mode, but actually a live reaction to the book in just a few moments. 
and just so you're aware, yes, this was my genuine reaction to finishing this book. I've cried on this channel more than once now, so that's only mildly embarrassing. And then one last post-it for the road. All right, okay, we're done with this nonsense. Oh my God, my feelings are everywhere and I need to drive home now. And how am I supposed to function? I cannot believe I had to finish that book and like not talk to you guys. I'm destroyed, I am a wreck. I'm, how dare you, how dare you? Okay, so, um, Emery Lee, hello, hi, yes, um, we need to talk. First of all, who gave you the right to make me feel such emotions? Um, yeah, long story short, this book broke me and I cannot believe that I had to react to it almost completely in silence. I, I needed to talk before I even, like, got my mic on because I needed to freak out about how cute this was. So yeah, Me Cute Diary met and exceeded all of my expectations. It was everything I could have possibly wanted with the cliche fake dating trope, but also everything I wasn't expecting with flipping the way the cliche fake dating trope worked. And also Noah is like me, same bro the tumblr blog with all the like f made up romantic crap yep 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 i relate feel that feel that too hard words are not working right now because this just made me so happy that i don't like i like romance huh i was just reading too much straight white romance but no i i like romance how about that so in conclusion, this was the greatest video idea I have ever had. I did want to read Me Cute Diary and May the Best Man Win on my own time. And plus I got sent the passing playbook to read and review. So at some point I was going to read them anyway, but the fact that I got to read them back to back to back and compare and contrast was just like my mind. Amazing. Thank you, Brain. You did something good for once. So ultimately, here is my ranking of the three books and what reviews I would give them. First up is Meet Cute Diary. I am absolutely going to rate this five stars. I will write out a full review eventually once the word vomit in my brain stops, but it was adorable and precious and perfect in every single way. All the representation, all the wonderful exploration of different identities, and just adorable. I'm talking so fast because it was just wonderful. I loved it so much. Second on my list is The Passing Playbook. I adored how cute this was. The only thing is the sports and the pacing. Otherwise, I just thought this was absolutely precious and adorable. Adventures are wonderful, justice is wonderful. I love how this book delves into the systemic way that transgender people are discriminated against with laws that prevent people from playing sports on the teams they want to and things like that. Absolutely wonderful, great. And then third place in this video is gonna go to May the Best Man Win. It wasn't my cup of tea, but I absolutely see the appeal for some people. If you're into a messy drama and just like all kinds of pettiness, ultimately leading to a lover's to enemies back to lovers trope this will be the book for you in conclusion i am full of emotions and also now i need to like find more books like this because i like romance now who would have known all it took was for me to stop reading about straight white people no offense straight white people but uh it's just more fun when you can see yourself in characters you know and it's so much more fun when it's not just a cookie cutter same kind of blonde haired blue eyed white girl and brunette brown eyed tall boy who has a dark edgy side like i we've seen it before we've seen it so many times before and this was just so so refreshing to not see that anyway yeah this this video was a great idea i loved this and if you want some recommendations for some trans rom-coms featuring people of color here's three for you there you go also can we talk about the fact that becky albertali blurred all three of these books love that for her. So that's it for this week's video. Thank you all so much for watching and joining me on this chaotic adventure. If you like this video and want to see more content from me, please feel free to subscribe. It would mean the world to me. And thank you all so much for 6k. With That's crazy. Um, thank you. You guys are awesome. I can't believe that you all tune into this mess, but I'm glad you're here. So until next time, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.